Welcome back. Welcome back. This is that. The boys are here today. We are talking playoff basketball. Magic versus Cavs. We got a big time Cavs fan over here to my left. Uh, we got a Magic hater right here in the middle. And we got 12 who's neutral. So we're going to get in here and chop it up. See where we can get to the bottom of. Yeah, I mean, start off. Just talking about this is going to be the first playoff series to be streamed on Timu. He's fucked up. I'm seeing that one all over Twitter and Instagram. It's messed up. Um, and just for the people that are going to give me complaining, saying that you it's too much offense, no one plays defense in the NBA, watch this series. It'll be lower scoring than most of the college games in March Madness because these two teams are going to defend their asses. Dare I say it may be a boring series? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it's like, people enjoy the offense and then they act like they it's so bad because it's too like they score too much. But I digress. Um, we're going to talk basically about each side, what they've done so far this season, how they've matched up against each other, and then get into some key matchups, things for each team that they have to do in order to win the series. And then, of course, our game picks. Um, I'll rip, I'll rip first here for the Cavs. I think the most important thing is being able to just hit Last your. Um, is being able to hit your open shots. If you can go and you can get a 40% from George Niang, a 38% Ice. from um, Isaac Okoro or Karis LeVert, um, Max Struess is going to have to have a game or two here where he goes for four or five threes. Like These are the things that are going to have to happen. You have to take advantage of the looks the Magic give you because they are – insane defensively like they're they look a lot like the Cavs last year like they really really do um young team bigger um offense is a little lackluster but their defense is off the charts it's literally the Cavs of last year um and I'm pretty I don't want to say nervous for this series because I do lean Cavs um but I think for the Magic they just have to impose their will on the boards because this team for as big as, as the Cavs are, they just don't rebound as well as they should. They just simply don't. And you can get boards on this team. Um, since in the latter half of the season, we started off the season great rebounding wise, um, not allowing offensive rebounds over the last part of the season. It's been atrocious. And for the magic, if you can capitalize on that, because I mean, the Cavs starting lineup, the first three positions are six, one, six, one, and six, five. I know Jared Allen and Nevin Mobley are tall, but Jared Allen's only 6'9". Like, they just have – the Magic have a lot more size and length than the Cavs do, just one through five. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest keys for both teams just to start off. But uh, They play similar pace, first of all. and They're both half-court teams. And I know J.A. and Mobley are big and tall, but they're both twig gang. And – Jonathan Isaac, I know Matt's going to get into it, is going to have an absolute field day. Before you do rip into that, I just want to throw this out there. Jalen Suggs, if you're listening to this, and I've hated on you many times on this pod, uh, I started to come around to you a little bit towards the end of the year. I just wanted to say I was not familiar with your game. You did snipe my girl, and I've done a lot of thinking about it. I've molded over, and I think I'm fit to squash the beef. So I'm not going to make a big deal about it. I do respect your game. Just held Dame um, a two of fourteen shooting, and he know when Giannis is out, Dame averages twenty five shot attempts a game. So just think about that. It's the defense is real. Donovan Mitchell's going to be in hell for a while. Great defender on and off the court because I've been trying to get in the Van Lift DMs and I'm getting denied. <laughs> but no, I mean just to talk about Jonathan Isaac. I mean if you guys, I mean obviously Magic fans, if you watch that game and Cavs fans, you were probably honestly watching that until the Cavs decided to pull everyone. But um, in that game, dude, Jonathan Isaac looks like the best defense player in the NBA. It was ridiculous. Um, he was playing the five. He was guarding um, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis. Didn't matter. Dude, help side blocks on the ball. Just He's so lanky. It's like it's suffocating. His defense is going to be a huge thing. I think we're going to see, as long as Jamal mostly plays him, um, cause he hasn't really played him as much as I think he deserves to be played personally, but it allowed, um, it allows you to throw him on an Evan Mobley. And I think that's going to cause Evan a lot of problems to be honest. And Evan's been a lot more aggressive over the latter half of the season. So if you can get really good Jonathan Isaac minutes in this series, and you can bring Evan Mobley or Jared Allen out from the paint, it's going to be huge. We saw them do it with the Bucks. That Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, he ha pulled them out of the paint by being at the five because he's going to hit, hit some threes here. He shoots 38%. So pulling them out of the paint allows you to get more driving lanes and everything 
to get going. Because once you get into the paint, which is the Cavs' number one thing, you don't want to let them in the paint. Um, if you can be able, if you're able to do that, then you'll be have a good chance to win this series, no doubt. Twelve. Me personally, uh, I'm excited to see Orlando. I want to see what it is that they that they are capable of. They have the size. They have the defense. And, uh, you know, just as much as we can see that it could be a battle of just great defense being played between these two teams, they both have the stardom, at least one player, to be able to carry the momentum of an offensive game that is unlike what we're used to seeing throughout the entirety of the NBA that is a little bit more aggressive, I would say a little bit more punctuational. We know that with Spider, and we're starting to see that being cultivated within Paolo Bencaro's game. He stepped into his rookie season playing as if he was already a veteran, so this being his sophomore year, a bit bigger, a bit, strong, bit stronger, a bit hungrier, especially to be able to lead his team to the first round against the second seed, three seed, what, four seed throughout the season. You know what I'm saying? But um, I think that they are definitely coming to play and, and coming to see, you know, what it's really about. And can Cleveland hold that down? I'm not so sure, but I'd like to say so. But I'm going to – I need to see more from Darius Garland. I need to see – more from Evan Mobley, Evan Mobley specifically, and uh, I feel as if Spider's going to show up as he as he does. Yeah, I think for me, there's for just Cavs fans and what the Cavs should do. If I'm the head coach of this team, the Magic's offense isn't great, and they don't have a ton of guard oriented like initiation of the offense. They play very free, like everyone kind of touches it, but majority of the time it's Franz and Paolo really distributing and trying to like get into open space and drive and kick. Like that's the magic. It's the magic's offense is not super complicated. So this is a series where you play a Sam Merrill. This is a series where you play an Isaac Okoro a ton. These guys, I, Sam Merrill should be at least getting 15 minutes a night in the games versus the magic this year. He was 11 from 19 from three. And the looks were pretty much a lot of them were open. And a lot of them were tough, but this is a guy that's going to go and give you six, seven threes in five minutes. Like, that's the rate that this guy shoots and he's just an automatic spark plug. And since you don't, he's not really going to get one-on-one um, -on -one attack. Obviously they're going to run pick and roll and switch him on to guys. But I think enough of what he can do offensively will make up defensively. And then just Isaac Okoro, he guarded in this games versus the magic for 11 or 12 total minutes. Paolo shot two of 10. He has to play. He has to be on Paolo. He absolutely has to. I'm sorry, but this is a series where we don't see a ton of a George Niang or um, even just for go deeper, but like a Tristan Thompson, we don't really see a ton of these guys. You have to go. And I know they're bigger and stronger and George Niang's a bigger guy, but you have to be able to go and create some offense and you have to be able to throw your best defender out there. You have to. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of Isaac Okoro specifically. I would like to see a little bit less of Karis personally, but um, I just think that if you can get Isaac significant burn, cause he's more than capable now in the playoffs, like this year to last year at this time, it was night and day. So Isaac Okoro is going to be a huge piece of this series. And I just hope JB doesn't fuck it up to be honest. Cause he has to play. So does Sam Merrill. You're, you're going to really hope, they got dim lights over there in Orlando because you don't want the lights to be too bright for Jay. No, I'm playing. Um, DG needs to play his role. Donovan needs to facilitate as well. I know they're going to be, you know, not struggling to score points, but if if this weekend was any indication of how the series is going to go, it's, it's going to be a gridiron battle. Um, I think it goes six Cleveland's way. I think there's a good battle of the bigs, um, like just Mo and Jonathan Isaac going at it with them too. Three like or four like pretty young bigs, pretty inexperienced. I mean, not Jared Allen's not young and inexperienced, but you know what yeah, I'm saying. Mo came in around the same time, but they both haven't really been in this situation a ton. I mean, Mo, I don't think ever has Jared once or twice. So I think O Glass is going to be a huge part. I think actual volume percentage is going to be a huge part, and taking good shots and not falling into isolation if you're the Cavs, like getting down to the end of the shot clock with DG or Don, which I think they've done a better job of this year than last. Um, but but not falling back into that kind of thing because you're in desperation is going to be huge for them. Also kind of sticking to their guns defensively. I feel like they have a certain way that they play. 
and uh it's almost like they're 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 like a like a shadow of themselves from last year i feel like they need to get locked into kind of the way they were playing it's it's not the personnel it's not the mindset it's kind of the style that they were playing last year you can correct me if i'm wrong i haven't watched too many no, Cavs games I mean, but that's the vibe i got if the reason last year i think two biggest keys were the Cavs' losses were they couldn't hit open shots and they couldn't rebound so who do you sign in the offseason you get a George Niang and a Max Struess, guys who are going to be able to hit shots. So this is time to see if this is paid off because the Magic don't give you a ton of open looks. So you have to be able to hit the open ones. And you have to be able to take advantage. You can't go cold like the Bucks did in that game versus the Magic just to get for the Magic to clinch. They held the Bucks seven minutes to end the second quarter without scoring or a, a field yeah, goal or scoring. We, we, like we can't that, do that is, I mean, I know it's not like that's an insane number. But, like, you can't go on four-minute scoring drafts. You just simply can't against this team. Um, I think their offense is definitely – like, their offense is 22nd in the NBA, I think. So, it's nothing to behold. But the Cavs isn't much better. It's around 15, so, like, league average. But, I mean, on your point for Darius, Darius honestly has played his best games against the Magic this season. He's averaging 28 and 8. Um, so – I'm excited to see him. Um, he's looked better than he has over the last few games. And I think the biggest thing is turnovers. You can't let either of these teams turn the ball over um, or you have to force turnovers and get out and run because their half court defense is just going to be too tough to consistently get a rhythm and score on. So um, turnovers, I'm going also Cavs and six. Um, if you want my game by game breakdown, I think it's Cavs, Cavs, Orlando, Orlando, Cavs, Cavs. That's just my feeling on it. Um, but Slim, what's your game pick, series pick? I can see that. Um, I may, I may go. go ah man, I don't, I don't want to be biased. I really don't want to be biased. Do whatever you want. It comes to. down to Evan Mobley. It comes down to Evan Mobley for me. You think y'all are gonna play Dean Wade at all? He's comes down he's, been hurt. he's been hurt and like. George has been really good for us recently, so I don't think he'll get much burn. But if if he was healthy, he or I don't, he's probably going to be back. But there's no like real update because it's Dean right. Wade. But um, no, I think if he was going to play, they would have announced him like being questionable or something. But yeah, I don't think so. Uh, if DG can consistently, like you said, you know, give them twenty and eight, twenty eight and eight, uh, in spite of still. Uh, Fills his role, facilitates for his team, finds J.A., helps get Mobley into the positions that allows him to be the most of a threat that he can be while on the floor. And I think that means attacking the glass offensively, defensively. You got to be able to keep up with whoever it is that they have guarding you and whoever it is that you may have to guard because they may – have a little bit more strength. Mo definitely, Jonathan Isaac, if he just so happens to get caught in a switch or if they play whoever man, I think that that's a lot of that's a lot of strength and power that the that Cleveland is going up against. And um uh, I just it comes down to Spider and all them cats being able to lead and work as a team. But I think I think Orlando's hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like look at the dogs that they got over there. Uh P five Franz is different. You got guys. I'm not disagreeing with you. I think this series is going to be – it's going to be – like every game is going to be close. I don't think we're going to see a team win by 30. Like if you bounce the first round, you need to blow it up. Yeah, no. No. Something's but if, for, if they're underdogs – The Cavs underdogs. are currently minus 180 to win the series. So they're – like I don't want to say a Easily decent favorite. favorite. Yeah. But like they're basically like – think of it as like the Cavs are projected to win every game by four. Like that yeah. would be – the expectation i'll say just as much as we're about to get a show from chet in okc we definitely know that for the playoffs you know i think that the same could be said for paolo i think we are about to see a different animal in him that we haven't seen before because they haven't <laughs> been up on this pedestal before being this close to to competition and i think that the roster that they have has that underdog mentality they want to make noise so you going with orlando and how many games i'm gonna go with orlando i could see six or seven just as well this is gonna be a great crazy yeah right man real quick i i need two things okay from the mini cake here's what i need from him 
It's the G wagon, baby. Mini cake. I need a a like. This is a joke, but it's also not a joke. Like if you guys get down early in like game one or two, and and some weird shit's happening, I need a gusto technical foul. Oh, he needs, he'll give you one. Him or Max, to, will give you he needs to come in and absolutely clobber somebody. Like they're going up for a layup, and he just goes dual forearms. Are you serious? I'm recording here. He just goes dual forearms straight down over the top. I need that. And second of all, what I need from him, and I told you this on the phone the other day, I need a minivan signature game. Yeah, no, he'll give you one. Maybe five or six threes, and he's talking his shit. That would be huge for your guys' morale. It would be. It would be. But that's it for this one. Leave your pick in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon. Peace.